Thanks. Uh, hello, and thank you for coming to this talk. Um, we will talk a little bit about uh, IT security compliance or uh, about compliance management and uh, what's possible uh, to do there and um, mostly how to do it right because, um, well, we will see what they don't like about uh, how it's done usually. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Adrian Wiesman. Um, I'm working as an IT security officer in a Swiss financial institute. Um, and yeah, I like to uh, bother and uh, I, I think um, I like to uh, help out in making things more secure. The, um, the agenda of, of uh, my speech, first of all, I covered the, the, the problems I see with uh, compliance management, then um, I will um, introduce some uh, solving strategies, how we do it, um, how I think it should be done, a um, few solutions and uh, what could be done as well if there would be some more resources to uh, develop these. But first, a few uh, words about the motivation, why I'm doing this talk, why I'm doing uh, compliance management at all. Um, I think uh, we should do things simple. Uh, during my daytime, I'm having quite many things to do and I'm not having that much time um, to loon around or uh, to, um, don't know, make things more complicated than they should be. So uh, my main motivation is to, um, to, re to remove the overloads, to make things simple. But let's uh, dive into the um, problems with compliance management. Problem number one for me is the amount of controls, which means um, you have that uh, asset owner or that custodian and he has to follow um, some controls and um, usually, that's my experience, asset owners don't really know what they have to do. They run to the security officer and ask him or her. Um, so it's uh, usually just um, too much for them. Um, there, there are also uh, more questions like um, controls are written in authority documents. Uh, the, the link authority documents means an authority document is a document which contains controls which tell you what to do. So um, there are very many authority documents and usually you don't know which ones are relevant for you. Um, usually um, you don't know which ones are relevant in your current situation. Usually, um, you don't know how these controls affect you in uh, your current environment or your uh, company. And um, usually, these are change, and you don't really get it when they change, and so uh, you lag behind a version or two or whatever. So, um, it's just too much. The second problem I see is uh, the disorder. Uh, you have these many uh, authority documents, you have these controls, and they sometimes they um, have some, um, some overlaps. You have some controls which nearly say the same, but don't really, um, which um, um, completely state different things. Um, and, and again, uh, you don't really know what does this mean for my environment, what does this mean for my assets I do have, if you know what assets you have. Um, there, I just heard that there are companies which don't even have a network map, so um, not that I'm surprised, but it's always uh, surprising to hear it, that it's really true. Um, there's also the question, if you know what assets you have, who is responsible for them? With a network Networks can usually see which, uh, which machines you have, but not who's responsible for them. Um, so this order is about um, you have these controls, you have your assets, but you don't really know how this matches together. Then an uh, uh, authority document changes a version, the controls change, you have some overlaps, um, you do things twice, and you don't uh, really uh, recognize that you do it twice. Um, you need an internal document management system where you uh, track these uh, authority documents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, usually this means uh, there's just one guy uh, tracking the st that stuff, 
and uh, we don't, at, at least at the company I work for, we don't really have the time to, uh, to uh, have one person only doing that. And one of the bigger problems is compliance isn't cool. Um, that's at least what the cool boys say. You probably um, have seen, um, you've probably seen that uh, film uh, where that guy is um, sitting on a motorbike and then um, he's putting all the, the leather on because that's uh, what's making him secure. So he has some boots, he has a jacket, he has a, a helmet and stuff. And then he's sitting on the, on the bike and says, well, okay, now I'm secure, but um, what do I really need to wear? And at the end, he's only wearing, as you see on the right side, a helmet and some sunglasses and some shorts. So uh, the, um, what they say is, um, or what the, the, the film or the movie says is, um, the right thing is compliance, the left thing is security, and compliance isn't really what you usually wear on a motorbike, except you're American, I guess. But um, over here, usually you wear the, the left um, thing. And um, what I really think is, um, many are laughing about this, uh, about this uh, movie, but uh, they actually miss the point. Um, of course, uh, compliance management, um, you can do compliance management just uh, as it's written in the book. Just do X, Y, Z, whatever and don't even think about it, just do it. Um, many companies do it like that. Uh, there are um, PCI compliant companies uh, which were cracked, so um, compliance doesn't really help you there. Um, but I think compliance management should be about more than just following the, the letters in, in the books or in the authority documents. Um, to do compliance management correctly, you should know um, what's your company about. Um, I heard a, a speech recently uh, which said you should know, um, if you don't know what's the, um, uh, how is it called, the, um, uh, the, 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 the sentence which states what your company does. The, um, just don't get it uh, right now. So if you don't know the, the sentence of your company, you don't really know what's your company about. I, I don't really think that's true, but at, at least you should know what does your company, what's important for your company, which assets are really important for your company, um, what is your environment about, what is your company about, um, as I said before, what assets do you have, why do you have them? Perhaps you have them, but you don't really need them. And um, much more important, um, how do they play together? And um, the problem number four is, at least, uh, and that was the, the, the flaming um, uh, slide I just recently um, promised, uh, many miss the point. If you look at literature, uh, white papers, um, other documents, sources, um, nothing much has changed in the last few years, if at all. Um, you, you do it, uh, you take the uh, authority documents and you do it like, like it stated there, but don't really think about how you can uh, make it simpler or how you could make it uh, so that your company really can uh, profit from this. And um, we sat there and uh, thought about this and uh, noticed that it's actually uh, time to change and uh, we started the project which you thought, okay, then we have some uh, kind of um, organization where we can put in everything we do. And um, when I say we, um, this means um, SOMAP. SOMAP is an open source project, uh, which uh, means uh, security officers management and analysis project. And um, we started this because we uh, worked um, and not only worked as users, but also as developers with tools which do risk and compliance management. And we just noticed, um, without naming names, but there's a German product which, uh, where you model your whole environment and everything. And um, we weren't that happy with these tools. And so we thought, okay, um, we start our own project and try to work on, uh, on that topic. The main goals we had when we started. 
the, um, the goal one was we didn't want it to reinvent the wheel. So we wanted just to focus on what had to be changed and leave everything else. Um, don't uh, reinvent any software which is already there. Just, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, keep it simple. Which is also the goal number two. Simple, simple, simple. Um, make it easier to use, make it easier to, uh, to follow, make it uh, less complicated to uh, manage, etc. And very important, um, we wanted to make, uh, we wanted to think outside of the box. So we didn't really um, follow paths which are, were already uh, walked by others. We wanted to, um, to try to find some, el some way around the, the, the main paths. Um, and our approaches, if it would scroll. Uh, we had a few strategies, and uh, let's talk about uh, these few strategies. Um, we knew we had to write software because we wanted to automate things. We wanted to, to take away the, the load, the workload from, from ourselves and put it into software. So um, first we uh, thought about a uh, data model and it was um, right at the beginning it was quite clear that we had to work with aggregation or um, you could also call it deduplication. And um, if you look at this uh, slide here, on the top you have these, uh, these are just examples, there could be many, many else or many more. Um, you see these um, authority documents like uh, ISO uh, 27000, COVID, uh, PCI DSS, and all of these contain controls. And what we wanted to do is um, take these controls and just aggregate them so at the end we have some aggregated controls. As I mentioned before, no duplicates. And to do so, um, there are quite a few strategies or um, ways to do so. And uh, at the beginning, we thought it's much more easier than uh, it, it was at the end. But uh, let's first talk about uh, the, the strategies. If we have these uh, catalogs at the beginning, you see that there uh, could be um, uh, double namings. But the first strategy was, if you have catalogs which don't have any double name, uh, doubles, um, just remove these duplicates and uh, at the end you have an aggregated catalog. That's the easiest way, but unfortunately it doesn't work all of the time because the catalogs usually have some uh, intersections. So um, the, the second strategy was you take a master catalog and then you just add the stuff you, which is not already in there. Um, and at the end you have an aggregated catalog. Unfortunately, this doesn't work that great as well because um, there's some weighting at, uh, in, in these catalogs. Some catalogs have uh, controls which are stronger than uh, other, other uh, controls from other catalogs, which means um, if you look into a PCI DSS, it, it states uh, what you need to, uh, to lock, as example, and the ISO doesn't state what exactly you have to lock. So you have to, you have to look after these uh, weightings. And so the, the next strategy um, came to mind, which um, is the weighting strategy. So you take that catalog, or these catalogs, you remove duplicates, you do the weighting, which control is stronger than the other ones, you take the strongest, and at the end, you have an aggregated catalog. Um, a friend of mine did this for three catalogs. Um, he had quite some time to do so. And the problem is, or really is, it doesn't scale. Which means if you have four, five, six, seven catalogs and they have intersections, uh, it doesn't really work. So, um, or, well, it does work, but it is Royal Pita at the end. Um, so there's, a, luckily, there's a, even a newer strategy. We found a, company, a company which does this aggregation. And um, it's called the Unified Compliance Framework. 
and they do nothing else than um, they just take uh, authority documents, they um, do that aggregation or they do that uh, mapping stuff, and at the end they have their aggregated catalog and they sell it. The, um, the thing there is, um, they have about three or four hundred uh, authority documents um, that they really are able to do it to, to build a, an aggregated catalog, they had to reinvent their own. So there's a 400 and first um, uh, catalog, which contains all of the others with uh, cross-references. But the cool thing is you have these cross-references. So if you follow their catalog, you have all the, the controls aggregated and deduplicated as you would like it. But um, first we thought, okay, that could work. Uh, we could just buy that uh, catalog from UCF and uh, import it into our tool and just use it as it is. Um, unfortunately, you even need there some handwork. So um, at the end, you need to know what are you doing, which of these controls are really relevant for you, um, how do you uh, map it to, to your controls, etc. And uh, the worst of all, if you have some internal catalogs or authority documents, um, they're not in there, of course. So um, one of our strategies was to just throw the internal ones out and only use external ones because then uh, we don't have to track them anymore, the internal ones, or to map them or, or whatever. Um, yeah, and UCF is, is really cool without uh, doing too much commercial for them. Um, they, have, um, they have about these uh, 400, as I said. There are also European ones, even they are American uh, company. And um, um, they have uh, two, three uh, other things in their uh, catalog we'll, with, of, to which I will come back later. So uh, our second strategy um, <clears throat> was self-assessments. Um, we thought about, um, we had to, 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 to look after the uh, compliance level of our company. And um, strategy one was um, doing interviews. And uh, the literature, literature normally says do interviews, go to every asset owner or custodian and ask him about the compliance level of his uh, asset. Uh, we have about 130 or 40, um, at the company I work, we have about 130, 40 um, assets. This means uh, per asset you will usually have two hours of interview, uh, which makes about um, 200 hours of uh, interviews. Only interviews, you, didn't, you haven't done any, um, uh, you haven't worked on the, on the results, you d didn't do any um, reporting on it. it, it's just 200 hours of interviews which isn't really a solution or which wasn't really a solution for us. So self-assessment, even we, we knew or we still know that self-assessments aren't that um, um, perfect. Um, asset owners usually rate their assets better than they are, but uh, if you know it, it doesn't really uh, matter anymore. So we again, and when I say we again, uh, with SOMAP, uh, we looked again at um, our data model we had already, and we said, okay, so we add uh, audit questions and assets to the model we already have. And the, um, the audit questions are just one-to-one -one mappings to the control, so every control has a, has a question to it, uh, like do you lock, as example, or do you write locks, um, and we also uh, mapped the controls to assets, which means uh, if you take the asset web server, you can, with, the, with a simple query, look up which controls are relevant for that asset. So an asset owner only sees his relevant questions. Um, the, the last time we did uh, self-assessments, these were about 30 questions for a system owner, 30 or 40 questions, instead of having 120, 130, whatever, which reduces the time uh, quite a bit. The, the third uh, strategy uh, is the metadata model. So we went and uh, did that uh, model, which is uh, over here. Uh, th these are actually two uh, separate um, like sectors or something, 
the upper one is called the model, the, the, the lower one is called uh, instance. And the, the model part or the, um, is, is actually like uh, you know it from uh, developing. The upper one is the class, the, the lower one is the instance. Um, so the, the upper one could be um, shared amongst uh, different companies and the lower one is the, contains the data from your environment which you usually want to uh, keep safe and not share with anyone else. Uh, let's look at these uh, several um, uh, objects over there. The standard objective and the objective aggregate is the, the stuff we already uh, talked about before. Um, it's just the whole uh, authority documents and uh, controls in there uh, with the audit questions and what we call the asset template. And an asset template is actually just the model of an asset, like a web server. It doesn't say which one, but it says web server. And on the instance part, we have that assessment. Uh, compliance contains the, the, the answers to the questions. And uh, at the end, on the right side, there's an asset. And the asset is the real instance. It, it's that web server down there below the table, or wherever you have it. Um, then you also map a subject and rows and stuff, just uh, to make sure that uh, you know who's, um, who's the asset owner. Um, and who has to fill out the uh, assessment, etc. Uh, what we also have is an inventory because we said, okay, um, usually a company has an asset management system in place. Uh, we don't want to remodel it here like with the German uh, software I mentioned before. Um, let's use what's already there, just import it into our tool and um, use it from there. Then, What we then thought about was that uh, actually, if we have that data model or that meta model, we could use it for other things as well. And the first thing which came into mind was a uh, risk assessment. Let's look again at uh, the model we have, this time a little bit uh, with some changes in it. On the upper left side, again, you see objective safeguard um, or objective at least. I uh, removed the other uh, tables. And what we added was just a threat, a safeguard, and a scenario, and uh, again, an asset template, which means an asset template and a threat together give a scenario, um, an attack scenario, if, so, uh, if you want so. And um, every objective uh, has some safeguards. And if you map this together um, and you uh, do some um, um, if, um, and you use the, the tables uh, on the lower side, um, you just can do your um, risk calculations on your assets with the controls we already know. Um, you can map the safeguards, etc. And you have uh, with the same or nearly the same data model, you can do some um, quite nifty uh, risk assessment. Which is also great because um, the, the information you have from the risk assessment you can reuse on the self-assessment. Um, the, um, the data model is uh, built so that you can um, um, do some history, look uh, at the, the last assessments and do some uh, co comparisons to, to see if they became better or uh, worse uh, with their compliance level. And what we also said is um, we won't do any, or we don't want to do any silly calculations. And if I say uh, no silly calculations, I mean um, there are some tools which do percentages, uh, percentages for um, to um, track the, um, the realization of controls. I'm not sure, but I don't know what it means. I lock 50%. I, I really have no idea what this means. So what we said is okay. Um, Either you do the logging, you plan to do it, or you, you don't. Anything else doesn't really matter. If you have 30% of your lock or 40, I don't really care. Either you have it or you don't. And if you don't, you're not compliant, and that's all. Um, we don't do anything on uh, so-called best practice uh, or, or good practice. Well, good practice, okay, but not best practice. Um, usually best practice is something which a few guys came together and wrote it down. Um, we think um, it could make sense somewhere, 
but usually not in your environment or your company because they don't know your company. They don't know what you do and what your company is about. So you can take best practice, but then you have to adapt it to the company. So um, one of our goals or strategies is to not do anything uh, on, on best practice. Uh, what we also didn't want to do was uh, anything uh, magic. Just, uh, um, like I said, with these risk calculations, magic for me is um, my, um, um, my risk factor is five. And uh, I have a five because I count two, twice one and a half or something, or twice uh, two and a half. Um, what does this really mean? I have no idea. Um, you say the likelihood is two and the, the, the impact is a three. Uh, okay, but you don't really know what this means. And if somebody else does it, uh, probably has a likelihood of one, uh, and you don't really know where's the difference. Um, so um, we played around, or I played around with, uh, with uh, that uh, threat agent library from uh, Intel, where you have like a CVSS system, you have some factors which are not based on numbers, um, so we really do try to do uh, things without magic. And um, there's uh, actually a, a compliance management tool which has a solitaire game in it. Uh, we think uh, it's okay to have a solitaire game. Uh, I like to have it uh, on my uh, phone, but I don't really like to have it in my compliance tool because I don't really need to do solitaire. Um, probably I could do with the solitaire, I could do the risk calculations. If I win, it's a two. If I lose, it's a one or something. Anyway. Um, what I talked about is uh, things we, we currently do, which we, um, uh, for the company I, I, I work for, the uh, financial institute, which um, we use since three years. Uh, this December we will use it the, the fourth time. And um, I'm taking the, the know-how from there and trying to apply it somehow or to refine it to, to add it to sum up. So it's not uh, something we, I just invented here and uh, presenting here. It's really something some guys are working on and already used it. Um, from where we are and where we want to go to. As I said before, I want to make things simple. And one of the, the, the things which we could make simpler is a self-assessment is actually answering something. Most of the cases you know the answer already or you could know the answer already. Um, I wrote up here uh, metrics. The, the screenshot I have here is uh, from metricscenter.net. Um, what they do there is they have, uh, on the left side, they have these authority documents or some authority documents. And for some of the controls, they uh, have um, uh, metrics in there. So you don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Just um, look in there and apply them to, to your environment or um, first find out if it makes sense to apply them. Um, the idea behind that is that um, questions you ask on the assessment or the self-assessment could actually be answered already by a clever metrics management system or, uh, or, or uh, questions could be answered by uh, metrics you, you already have or, or you could easily get. And the idea, idea behind that is to just remove even more work from the asset owner, so they don't have to answer things which are clear. What's cool about the UCF I mentioned before is they have metrics, and they already map these metrics to um, their controls, and what's best of it, they also have some examples how to um, represent those metrics in graphics. So you don't even have to think there, just apply it, uh, find out if it makes sense for you, and if it does, take it over. Um, this is one of uh, the, the ideas we have and which we would like to integrate in uh, our tool, the, some automated uh, metric import, whatever, we're not there yet. Uh, another thing we wanted or we would like to add is uh, evidence. And evidence is actually um, something which the asset owners asked about. They, um, they filled out the, the self-assessment 
and said, hmm, we would like to uh, store documents, we would like to store uh, references, links, whatever. And um, at least with uh, ISO, um, the authority uh, document, it's, um, it's uh, with PCI as well, uh, you are required to, um, to prove that you did something. So you have to have um, like a, a hardening uh, document or uh, whatever, and um, they really like, um, the asset owners really would like, at least with us, to, uh, to add these documents to, uh, to the uh, to application or somewhere. And the, the problem there is uh, we could actually build up a, a new um, um, document management system or something and, and link everything, or we could just outsource it to a tool which does that much, much more better. And, um, uh, I'm not sure where to go there, so uh, if you have an idea, please come up later and uh, to tell me your perfect idea. It, um, it makes sense to store actual snapshot of a document to prove that you did it, but it doesn't make sense to store it in that document, uh, in that uh, tool, because it's not a document management system. So. Um, that would actually be a, um, some help for the asset owners as well. So they, uh, if the auditor, the real external auditor, uh, comes to them and asks them for a proof that they, uh, that they um, are compliant with uh, control X, Y, uh, they just can, can um, forward him or her to the tool and say, there it's written how we do it. And they have everything uh, ready to, to show the, um, the auditor the external. Um, yeah, actually, that's about it. Um, I'm ready for questions.